God bless everyone. Welcome back to our podcast, Roof Corner. And um, we are here today. And honestly, it's um, <laughs> it's it's a Sunday, okay? And it's like about to be 2 a.m. in the morning. And I couldn't sleep but just give out a word and just make a video for you guys for this Friday. So this won't be dropped. This will be released on Friday. It's Sunday now, but it will be released on Friday. So I just wanted to get a video done for this week so I don't have to worry so much about it. Um, today, <laughs> today is one of those days like your girl cannot sleep as much. But it's okay because Ruth's Corner, sometimes she has a cup of coffee or a tea. And I promise you, I'm not going to lie. I don't drink tea like that, but I used to drink tea a lot, and I stopped drinking tea. Why? Because I love my coffee, okay? But there's some people that do drink tea, so I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> I promise you, I don't have an addiction. It's just, my mom used to give me coffee when I was, like, young. So, that's why I'm a coffee drinker. <laughs> so, yeah, but we got our coffee, and it's 2 a.m. in the morning. You're probably saying, Ruth, why are you drinking caffeine right now? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something right now. Coffee does not make me you know hyper it does not wake me up it actually makes me go to sleep so um <laughs> i'm gonna try my best to do this video so guys today 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 um we are going to be talking about a topic that honestly i'm really excited about and the topic is called um stop chasing and start following so um if you're gonna stick around and you're not part of our family what are you doing are you gonna just sit here and not subscribe you should subscribe subscribe every friday we have a new um video and a new episode this is episode two ooh, ooh, ooh. a lot of you guys liked episode one and i'm really happy that you guys enjoyed the episode um like i said very soon we will have some people in these episodes don't don't worry little by little we're growing we are you know letting god form and grow and expand this podcast so grab your coffee grab your bible um we're gonna go right ahead and we're gonna look for okay um matthew chapter 6 verse 19 let's pray real quick heavenly father god we give this to you today and we lay this at your hands so father god we ask you jesus that you take control over this podcast and that god that you speak to the people that are watching it lord father god i pray that lord that you protect them that you that your hand is upon each and every person that's watching this lord i pray that god that every word that comes out of my mouth comes from you and your wisdom lord god that it's not just me saying it but that you will be able to give me the understanding for me to be able to give it to your people and say it to your people i pray that god that you let yourself be glorified in this video in jesus name amen glory and honor goes to you god amen it says in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit amen okay. do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal that's the first thing that it says and i love how god is so direct because god did not say seek the just like seek the treasures of heaven he just he's letting you know don't seek the earthly treasures and he's giving you a reason why and then verse 20 it says but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal verse 21 it says for where your treasure is there your heart will be also I, I love the verse 21 because verse 21, it just said it. it. It just basically said, for where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. That's crazy. That's like almost saying like what you reap is what you sow, right? So, um, and this is like no wrong or right answer. So I, you guys can be comfortable. Y'all are learning. If you are still learning and you're still trying to figure out what the Bible you know means sometimes it can be a little you know it's hard for us to understand about but that's why we ask god to give us the understanding and wisdom for us to be able to read it and be able to know what god is trying to tell us through his word so um stop chasing and start following let me tell you something i had went through a lot of things and i always tell my testimony not all the time but sometimes i do because i feel like it's beneficial it's gonna help somebody that's probably going through the same thing or probably is going through something worse than me 
And chasing is actually one of the things that I had to stop in my life. One of the reasons why is because sometimes when you chase over certain things, it could be anything. It doesn't have to be people specifically. It doesn't have to only be like, you know, um, career wise. But sometimes chasing can be like you're chasing over depression because sometimes we, we blame on the depression creeping in over our lives. In reality, we give access to it. And um, when you give access to loneliness, to depression, to suicide thoughts, porn pornography, you are basically making a friendship. You're making a home with that. Now, that's the thing in the generation right now where we don't fully realize or we're not we're not keeping our eyes open because we might say, oh, I feel depressed. How do you feel depressed? Like, what is making you feel depressed? What is happening? What is triggering you in your life? And this is a good, like, if you want to know a lot of things about temptations and how to resist it, go check our episode one and you will you will learn on how to resist certain things in your life. And I promise you, I'm not saying you're going to be a you know, superhero, but I'm going to say is that you will be able to overcome any obstacle if you just, if you just set your mind to God because that's the whole point you got to put you, you got to set your mind to God you got to set your mind in his word you got to set his your mind into his love into his power because we all carry an authority and the thing is that there's still people that are still discovering the fire that's inside of them and the authority that God has given to them there's still people that are in bondage and they're in church and they know so much about word. They know how to worship. They are those people that worship God in the spirit and truth. But they're the same ones that have a struggle on being able to recognize that they have authority. And I remember one day I, I went to the front one day and I and I and I was so tired. I was so like discouraged. And a, I think it was no, it was a preacher. He came up to me. He said, Ruth, I was like. Mm -hmm. I was listening to him. He said, the Lord wants me to tell you that you carry an authority. You use that authority for a lot of people, but you don't use it for yourself. In that moment, I I stood quiet because that kind of gave me like a moment to sit back and really think and say, wow, if I go through depression, if I if I go through loneliness, if I deal with negative um, thoughts and I deal well in what's happening and what's um, I am well in well, what's being exposed to me, you know, I'm going to basically fall and stumble. But if I don't entertain the negativity, if I don't entertain the opinions of people, if I don't entertain my thoughts, if I don't entertain of what my past is, then I will be able to overcome and by why, but by, by how, we, how can we do that though? How can we do that? Oh, by recognizing the authority that we have and that we carry. And a lot of us, we don't know the authority that we have. A lot of us, we think that we're just there to use it just for people. And today I'm going to remind you, and I hope that this ministers to you tonight or today or this morning, that you carry an authority. And maybe you haven't discovered that yet, but today you're going to discover it. And you are going to be able to overcome any obstacle. You're going to be able to resist any temptation that comes near you, that appears in your life. Because you know what? In order for someone to overcome these challenges, let me tell you something. We're not superheroes because at the end of the day, the one that could give us strength, the one that can allow us to do all things through Christ is God. So if you just maintain yourself in the word of the Lord, if you just maintain yourself in his presence, if you just keep constantly going to God, even if no one is there for you, you will see the difference. And that is so true because in the word of God, it says also, and I don't remember what chapter or what book it says, um, pray continuously or continually continually and that really impacted me because people just say oh okay it's telling me to pray one of the reasons why it's telling you to pray is because the more you pray the more you get deeper with god the more you pray the more you start realizing the change that god is doing in you and people think that prayer doesn't have a lot of power but i promise you just for you to be on your knees you have a lot of power your prayer has a lot of power because you just laying everything down you know you just for you to lay down everything you know to god is so powerful you're telling god 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 of abraham god of isaac god of jacob 
let your will be done. When you kneel down, you're basically telling God, let your will be done over my life. I go to you because I have recognized that I cannot manage this life on my own. So I'm going to go to you and cast out all my anxiety, all my thoughts, all my all of my opinions, my understanding. I want to follow your wisdom. I want to get to know you, God, not just because of your love, but also because of who you are. Because the thing is that people are just going to God when they need him the most. But what I'm going to tell you is that start learning on how to go to God when you need him the most and the moments where you feel like you don't. <laughs> and probably you're saying, what do you mean, Ruth? A lot of us, this is what we do. We don't go to God when everything is every if everything's okay. We go to God when everything is bad. God is not a, a, a person that's supposed to be receiving only you know for you to vent because we go to god sometimes just to vent and god doesn't want you just to vent god wants you to have a relationship god wants you to have a full-on communication with him you know it's like it's so man uh, uh it's so amazing so like honestly over time i had to learn on how to not chase and that was mm, the insecurities i had the um the opinions of people, um, even like before I wanted a relationship and the Lord, you know, was telling me roof wait, And I didn't want to wait. I was so, I can say I was really frustrated because I felt like I was never going to have the opportunity to have someone in my life that I could share and love and that could love me as well. And we can have a relationship with the Lord together and be able to be united, you know? And over time, I was always praying for a relationship. And this is something that, this is what God taught me. How can you ask me to give you a relationship if you can't keep up with the relationship that we have? And that got me like, boop, like it like knocked me out. Because when you fully realize it, it's like a domino effect, you know, it's like a domino effect. And, you know, when you just um see this this way, <laughs> How can you love someone if you don't love yourself? How can you love someone if you don't even love God? How can you forgive somebody if you don't even know how to forgive? It's it's like, it's, it's a lot of things. It's a lot of things. Uh-oh. The devil is a liar. It's a lot of things, you know? And one thing I could tell you is that God had to work that area in my life where I had to learn on how to stop seeking for my desires first and start seeking for his kingdom because in the word of god it says seek his kingdom first and it says in matthew chapter 6 verse 33 and i'm gonna read it you know directly from the bible so that people do not be like oh you, you need evidence and i i don't care what people think but i'm just gonna just do it um for the benefit for those people that don't know that verse um and let me see here in matthew chapter 6 verse 33 it says but seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you and i love how it says seek the kingdom of god even though the word of god it says in psalms chapter 37 verse 4 delight in the lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart you see how every single like you know, sentence starts with delight and it says seek first because people want to know if they have purpose or not. People are willing to be present for the purpose, but they're not present in the seeking. You have to learn on how to be present at all times, even if, even if everything gets hard, even if, if things get hard, even if it starts getting a little, you know, rocky in the moment, you have to learn on how to see God in those moments in your life, even in the good moments, because at the end of the day, it's what strengthens you. It's what strengthens your relationship with God, actually. And when you um put to practice of what God has told you, like his word, you will start seeing a change within you, not just from how you look, but how you talk, how you act, how you present yourself, how you forgive, how you love, how to um, let go of your pride. There's a lot of things that like, man, the word of God can change so many things. And people just, 
people just think it's just rest, um, restoration and just liberation in reality. Yes, it is. God can liberate. God can restore. But there's so much more that God can do that we we see God in a in a just like in a limit, and you can't limit God. You gotta really. Let God be God because God is God. And at the end of the day, he has the last word. He has the beginning and last word, okay? Let's get a sip of our coffee. That coffee is really good. Okay, so. And I like how it says, seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness. His righteousness. Seek his kingdom and his righteousness. You see, God calls us righteous. But he calls us righteous when we seek and submit ourselves to him. And honestly, you're probably saying, Baruth, like, what are you trying to climb across to? Well, you know, you see, for you to to learn on not to chase and to stop chasing, you have to know on how to let, like, lay down your pride and, you know, do not think about what you think or to let go of what you feel about certain things because sometimes what you feel leads to a deceitful heart you know and that's why we gotta kind of be careful and pray before we do anything in our lives that's something that god is actually working in me um where he's teaching me on how to pray before i say yes or no because the thing is that you don't know what are you going to encounter with like you don't know like i understand we are christians we are children of god but at the end of the day we are humans now i'm not trying to belittle us because we no don't belittle yourself because just because you have a lot of struggles does not mean for you to belittle yourself you are strong you are courageous the lord calls you to and he wants you to be that way and he has made you that way but one thing i could tell you is that we have to learn on what um we have to learn on how to pray for our plans pray over whatever that's happening in our lives and make sure that God is included and make sure that the Lord is a part of it because the thing is that if let's say for example you go to a place okay you can you know you can get invited you know I don't know you can get invited in a mega church or something whatever and it's the most popular church that's out there it can be the most popular it can have a lot of people the community is amazing the pastor is amazing the leaders are amazing at the end of the day is that the place that God wants you to step into that's the thing a lot of us accept a lot of doors because we don't want to lay we don't want to let down nobody okay I understand that because that's like that's why I'm in the process of learning and you know sometimes we feel bad saying no but in reality you have to learn on how to say no <laughs> and it's hard to say no like don't get me wrong it's really hard to say no <laughs> but I'm learning on how to go to God and say God is this the place that you want me to minister and if this is this the person that you want me to pray for is this what you want me to say to your people is this the condition of the church can you lead me Lord God tell me where when how why you know like you have to tell God and talk to God so that God can guide you in the spirit because it's so important to have the spirit of the Lord with you you know the spirit is always the Holy Spirit is going to always back up his word always going to back up it's going to always back up the word of God now let me tell you something in the word of God it says if there's two or three or four no not four if it's <laughs> if there's two or three God has to be in the place now you know man there could be a hundreds but is god in the place god is now speaking about the amount of people he's saying that if there's two or three okay that are willing to worship god that have the same vision of the lord that's willing to seek the presence of the lord that's willing to ah wow that's willing to hold accountability with the spirit of the Lord, mm, God has to be in the place. God is not saying about numbers because, yes, I understand that when there's two or three, amen. But guess what? That's not the whole point of the word. The word is letting you know if there's two or three, God has to be in the place. But how can God can be in the place when the church is not divided? 
when the church is not full of with jealousy, when the church is following the vision of God, when the church is rejoicing together with their partner. There's so many things that, man, it, there's a lot, there's a lot, you know, and you just got to let the spirit of the Lord to really guide you in this walk and in everything, like when it comes to opportunities, when it comes to doors opening or doors closing, when it comes to have a relationship, friendship, um, jobs, um, um, what's it called? Even yourself, like if you're struggling with lust, if you're struggling with, you know, I don't know, discouragement, um, low self-esteem, whatever it is, you know, you have to really go to God and talk to God and question and say, God, I'm going through the storm. I don't understand it, but what you want me to learn from it? Always remember to ask God and say, what do you want me to learn from the storm instead of complaining about the storm? Because that's what we attempt to do. We complain about it. So when everything is not going well for us, what we do? We start chasing over the hurt. We start chasing over the depression. We start chasing over um, our relationships, our friendships. We start chasing over those shifts, you know, to work for like eight hours a day. Because we are just um, done with what we're going through. So we want to distract our mind. We start coping in the gym because, you know, um, I want to put some music in my ears. I want to distract myself from all the problems. You see, a lot of us, we start chasing after desires. And these desires, you know, are basically um, the earthly treasures, you know, and... In the word of God, when it says um, the earthly treasures, let's go back to Matthew um, chapter, give me a second, 6. Um, Matthew chapter 6, verse 19, it says, why did I, okay, there we go. <laughs> um, it says, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Hmm. God is telling you that the treasures of this world, they can sell you a car, <laughs> they can sell you a house, they can offer you, I don't know, a concert, whatever it is, they could offer you anything. And it's never going to fill you up, it's always going to leave you empty, it's never going to complete its promise, it's always going to break its promise, and it's always going to get stolen. Hmm. Because what the devil give you, man, it's just that the devil likes to satisfy the flesh. So when the devil satisfies you, he's going to satisfy what you feel. But over time, when it when that feeling has been satisfied, that, satisf um, that satisfaction is going to start to expire. Because it was just a moment of satisfaction. That's why God tells you to go to him when you feel angry. Because the thing is that you're not going to stay angry for your entire life. You're just angry at the moment. So go to God and let God take control over the situation. You know? So the devil entertains your feelings so that he can let you do these things and make you think that they're going to fill you up and that these treasures, no one is going to touch. It. In reality, they're going to be touched. But when it comes to the heavenly treasures, no one can touch it. Meaning, when God promises you something, when God calls you to be, you know, I don't know, a, a servant or whatever it is that God has called you for this time like this, no one can take your position. No one can take your gift. No one can touch you. No one can touch the doors that God opens and closes. No one can remove of what God has deposited in you, even if they will try to you know, knock you down and not allow you to progress from what the Lord has for you. People can do so many things to try to destroy what God has deposited in you. But at the end of the day, if you just look up to the heavenly treasures, no one could touch it and no one could take it away from you. So when it comes to the heavenly treasures, <laughs> no one can touch it. No one can steal it. Not even the devil. You see, one thing about the devil is that the devil, man, I, I just, devil, you're so nasty. <laughs> you know what's crazy is that um, the devil, he 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 thinks he's funny because the thing is that when when he um went to he actually you know he asks permission to God, and I'm sorry for stuttering. It's just like there's so many things I want to say, but um he asks permission to God and he said, you know. Um, I want to remove everything that Job, you know, has. 
because I know that he's going to curse you and that he's not going to remain faithful, right? And this is what God said. Okay, go run ahead, do what you want to do. But one thing I'm going to tell you is that my servant Job is going to remain faithful and he's not going to curse me. His wife that's basically near him, that's with him, she she even told him, she told Job, curse your God and die. And he went through a whole scenario in his life. It was like, like a blink of an eye. Like everything happened. He started getting sick. He started feeling, um, what's it called? Well, he started feeling sick. He started dealing with problems with his wife, whatever. And then everything started, you know, remo- started being removed out of his life. His friends started pointing at him and telling him, oh, you have bad luck. This is happening because you did something wrong. And you know what's crazy? Regardless of what he went through in those few seconds, in those few minutes, in those few hours, in one day, the only thing that he could do is raise his hand and say, thank you, God, I praise you. You see, what you're going through is not leading you into vain, is leading you for a different glory. Ah, come on, somebody. What you're going through is leading you to the surpassing glory that God is going to allow you to feel, is leading you to a moment for you to produce. Because that's the thing. Nowadays, we think that when we go through a desert, God is not listening to us. God has ignored us. God has left us alone. But in reality, God did not left you alone because what you're going through, that tribulation, that loneliness, or that moment of you being alone with God is going to allow you to produce something that you did not expect for yourself to produce so you know what they can keep talking about you they can keep pointing at you like the friends of job did guess what at the end of the day job did not lose his worship job did not lose his worship he did not lose his faith so even though his friends pointed at him even his own wife said what she said he still was able to produce something from whatever he went through and that's so powerful to me because people think that when God leaves us like in a silent mode, God is not caring about us. God doesn't love us. God doesn't want to be with us. Man, let me tell you something. If you just stop chasing and if you start following, if you just stop figuring out God, then you will see God's hand move like never before. And this is so important. That's why in the word of God, it says in um, Matthew chapter 6, verse 21, it says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where do you have your heart in? Like, where do you have your heart in? Because that's the same thing when it happened to Lot's wife. Lot's wife, and this is so powerful, guys. I don't know, man. I feel God. This is so powerful because, man, this this is so like like you can like relate to this so many things. Like you can relate it to a lot of things. Um, Lot's wife, when um she was running, and she was looking forward to the moment that Job said, "Do not look back. Keep looking forward." He was motivating her too. Like he was like, yo, don't look back. Keep running with me. Keep running with me. Like stay with me. No, I don't like, I don't know where she started looking back to the city of Sodom. And a lot of us, our hearts, our hearts, our hearts, mm, our hearts are conformed into a lot of things. And that could be your past. (laughs) That could be your trauma. That can be your, I don't know, your hurt. Your anger, your unforgiveness, your shame, your guilt. It can be in a lot of things. Where do you have your heart in? Like, where do you have your heart? Because if you have your heart, you know, in the past, if you have your heart in the opinions of what mankind think of you or what they say of you, then how are you going to continue on in your life if you have your heart stuck on that? And that's where we have to learn on how to stop chasing and start following God. Because let me tell you something, Lot did not stop running. Even if his wife looked back, he kept running. Because people that really want to see God, they will remain, they will remain their focus and sight on God. Even if things will get hard, 
Even if they don't understand the storm, even if they're in an uncomfortable season, they're willing to keep their sight and their eyes on God. Why? Because when God has a promise and he tells you to remove yourself out of that place, when God has a promise and he tells you to shake and dust off your feet and leave out of that town, it's because he's telling you that there's a reason for it. And it's not because God does not trust you. It's not because God does not have, you know, um, what's it called? That God doesn't believe in you is that God is protecting you from whatever is trying to destroy you. So now, tonight, I want us to learn on how to stop chasing whatever this world gives you. Because whatever this world gives you, man, I'm telling you, it's not going to fill in the void that you have in your heart. The only person that can fill in the void, that could help you, that can change this heart, that can renew your soul, that can renew your mind, is God. In the word of God, it says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And I'm going to look for that. And, and this is going to be the last verse for tonight. And um, let me see here. It says, verse 2, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may dis, um, well, discern what is the will of God what is good and acceptable and perfect. It's time for us to stop conforming into what the world is giving to us and what the world is. It's time for us to conform into the promise, to the relationship, to the word, to the wisdom, to the correction, to what the spirit of the Lord tells us, because that's the only way for us to keep following God. And what did the disciples do when Jesus said, follow me to Matthew and Luke? Luke was a doctor, if I'm correct, I think. If I'm wrong, then I probably got to mix them. Too. but Luke was a doctor Matthew was a tax collector and they both have good careers they were rich they had good money in the moment when Jesus says follow me they dropped everything that they had even if it was their career or not they decided to follow a lot of us we got to learn how to listen and really follow God and let him take control over the wheel because sometimes we want to take the wheel away from the Lord in reality mm. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Let's not say wheel because we're the ones using the wheel, right? Sometimes God needs to use the wheel and the brake. <laughs> you know why? Because when you let God take control over the wheel and you let him take control over the brakes of your car, he will let you know when to proceed and when to stop. He will let you know when to pause and when to continue. And a lot of us, we need to learn on how to accelerate and how to stop ourselves from certain things and from certain situations in our lives. So tonight, um, stop chasing and start following and start following the treasures of heaven, treasures, the treasures of heaven, because there's a big even better reward in heaven. And I promise you that's the crown of life. That's that's a crown that will be right here. And God is going to appreciate what you have done. And even though you did it, you know, by his power, he's still going to appreciate what you have done in this world. And not just you ministering and having a ministry, but you have decided to serve God and not serve the world and not serve what was given to you. You decided to serve the one that carried the truth. And that was the almighty God, the all be present, that's always present. And today, um, man. Just follow him and you will see things unravel in your own way and he will work in your favor. So I love you guys. Don't miss out. Um, this is episode two and um, subscribe and man, go check out our social media. If you guys want to get to know our ministry, all glory goes to God ministries. Do not miss out. There's a lot of events coming up soon. So if you guys want all my social media, there are a link below in the description box and you guys can go check me out and follow me and do not miss any event. Bye, guys. Have a good time and see you later.